Today our conversation is about the HP prime and Thevenin equivalent circuits. We begin with a very simple circuit, this one, and we want to perform an open circuit test and a short circuit test at the port PQ on the right. Normally we show the circuit twice, once to find VOC up here, and then a second time with the wire shorting the port PQ to compute the current through that wire, the short circuit current. I'm going to do that differently, taking advantage of the power of the HP prime. I will show the circuit only once, not two, to obtain anyway VOC and ISC. At that port, I connect an unknown resistor RX. Let me choose this node here as the reference one. There is only one other node that I label node 1. Do you agree with me? that if I let the value of the resistor Rx grow without bounds to infinity, then the voltage V1 of that node will tend to the open circuit voltage. That's right. So VOC is the limit of the voltage V1 as Rx tends to infinity. Correct. And what else? If I find the current through that resistor IRx or Ix, if I let the value of the resistance tend to zero, then that current in that resistor will be the short circuit current. That is exactly what I plan to do. Find the voltage in that resistor Rx and find the current in that resistor Rx and perform two limit operations. That is the Casey equation of the only one node at the top, Casey one current flowing from the left, this one here, 15 minus V1 divided by 2 ohms, plus the current pushing up from the bottom by this current source, 5 amps, two terms. That is equal to the currents leaving the node, three of them. This one, V1 over 3, this other, V1 minus 3 over 5, and finally I X the current through the external resistor, V1 over Rx. Let's go to the HP prime. There I have entered the equation and it is my custom. I have labeled that. I call that equation KCL1. Instead of V1, I'm calling the voltage of node 1 Vn1 because uppercase V1 is a reserved name in the calculator. You could use lowercase V1 and that would work just fine. Solve KCL1 for the value of the voltage in node 1, and we get no surprise, the function of Rx. The solve function returns a list of solutions, in this case only one. Let me extract the one single element in that list this way. First element of answer, that one. And that is the voltage of node 1. Let me assign that to the variable Vx, that's going to be the voltage in the resistor Rx. And next, let me compute the current in that external resistor as Vx divided by Rx, like so. No surprise, that current Ix is also a function of Rx. We are ready. VOC, the open circuit voltage, is the limit of the voltage Vx in the resistor Rx as Rx tends to infinity, that one. And the short circuit current is the limit of the current Ix as Rx tends to zero, that one. With those two values, we can compute VTH and RTH. VTH is directly VOC, and RTH is VOC divided by the short circuit current. Now let me find the floating point approximations of VTH. Evaluate as a floating point VTH is 12.7 volts and evaluate as a floating point RTH that is 0 0.97 ohms. And what is the maximum power? Well, the maximum power is VTH squared divided by 4 RTH. That is after an evaluate as a floating point value, 41 and a half watts. And that, my friends, is almost the end of this video, but we are still to draw the equivalent circuit at the port. This one, 12.7 volts, 0.97 ohms. And now, that's all, my invisible friends. Thank you very much for keeping company with me, and I hope to see you again in our next movie.